This is not only an important story, it's interesting on more than one level. This is an issue that's come up repeatedly in Milwaukee, but it's now an issue in another community in Wisconsin. The Milwaukee public school system is sitting on many empty buildings. Even though they conned voters into drastically raising property taxes, and even though their state and federal aid is now being threatened because they can't account for any, where the money is going, where the money is being spent, they have a number of buildings that they're not using. There are buyers available for almost all of them. But MPS doesn't want to sell them. Who would want a school building? By and large, somebody else that's going to start a school. And MPS doesn't want any more non-public schools in Milwaukee. So they simply sit on these buildings. There are obviously charter schools that we have around and a number of private schools, but the biggest startup cost that they have is they need a facility. In order to have a school, if you just buy, say, a grocery store or something like that, tremendous amount of retrofitting. And if you don't have deep cash, where are you even going to get a building like that? And to build something ground up, well, obviously, we know that's millions and millions and millions. The easiest thing to do if you're starting up a school is just buy one of the zillions of empty schools laying around out there. But MPS doesn't want to sell it to them because they fear that if that new school opens, even more children will then go to that school and even fewer kids will attend MPS. It's the ultimate frustration for conservatives and for a number of Milwaukee parents. We have the opportunity to get kids into better schools. We simply don't have enough of the better schools because MPS is doing everything possible to try to keep kids into some of the worst schools in America. Now we go to uh, Marinette. Marinette is very unusual. It's actually, we have two cities in Wisconsin that are twin cities of cities in other states. Duluth Superior are sort of like twin cities, obviously Superior's in Wisconsin, Duluth in Minnesota, and there's Marinette Menominee. Marinette is right on the Michigan border, the border with uh, Upper Michigan. Marinette, Wisconsin. Marinette, Wisconsin, the school district, like many school districts, is empty school buildings. This is happening all over the place, and it's going to become a far bigger problem, as I've talked about many times. The birth rate is crashing. We're just in the early stages of this kicking in because, you know, kids graduating high school right now, they're born 18 years ago. That's right around when the birth rate started to decline, but it really kicked in years after that. And each incoming kindergarten class is smaller and smaller. The only exceptions are the communities that still have a lot of, you know, farmland being subdivided and turned into housing. We've got a couple of those communities in our area here in southeastern Wisconsin where there's still, you know, there were communities that are just growing in population. The Slinger Richfield area is growing in population. Parts of Franklin, I think, are still growing because more and more of the farmland is being subdivided. But by and large, in most of the cities that are sort of landlocked in, the birth rate is crashing. Therefore, the school enrollment is crashing. They overbuilt these schools, and then voters were idiot and idiotic enough to pass referendums to let them build even more schools. And they got all these white elephant buildings. And Marinette, Wisconsin is one of them that has a white elephant building. There is a small Catholic school that wants to buy one of the school buildings in Marinette. The building, in fact, has been listed by the Marinette School District for sale. Is your wife still in real estate or did she get out of that? She's, uh, she's deeply, all right. So she's listed it for sale. Right? You know how things go when you list something for sale, right? All right, they've listed it for sale. Here comes this Catholic, would-be Catholic school. They offer at the asking price. Now, it's one thing to put a house for sale. If you got a school, very, very limited number of buyers that want a school. I mean, it's basically good to be a What else could you use? it? And you have to do a tremendous amount of renovation to turn a school into anything else, right? Yeah, I mean, I, there's actually a place in Madison they condoed it. They turned them into small condos. It actually made sense. They were all really tiny condos, like the size of a classroom. I'm trying to remember the name of that one. That was a million years ago. Yeah, anyway, so somebody comes in, they got a school, they get offered the asking price. This is like golden, right? Marinette turned it down because the offer came from this Catholic school. First of all, they put a school for sale. Who did you think was going to put in an offer? Quick trip? 
I mean, the only other potential buyer would be somebody who would want to knock it down for the land, which, in fact, has been done with some of these school buildings across the country and so on. Anyway, Marinette turned down the offer. And this is a story that gets interesting. The Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty, which is a conservative legal organization based in Milwaukee, is filing a lawsuit. It's presenting a legal challenge. In fact, the term is preparing a legal challenge. They haven't filed yet. Against the Marinette School District, alleging that they're violating the law by refusing to sell to this other school. And right in the statement from the Marinette School District, they come right out. They don't even lie about why they say this. They say, we don't want more competition. So they come right out and say this. So Willis pointing out, Willis, it's clearly discriminatory, not to mention the fact that it is a terrible deal for the taxpayers. Now, I'm getting to my actual point here in a moment. First of all, if you're a properly run school district, you want to get, you get cash and you get this white elephant off the books. You don't have to do the maintenance costs and so on. But the school district is afraid that they'll lose enrollment. And when you lose enrollment, you lose state aid, which these th school districts live for. Anyway, the point here is that this is a comment made by the school board member. And this brings me to the point I want to make. School board members' jobs is not to look out for the interest of the people who run the schools. The school board is to look out for the interests of the community. If you're a member of the school board, you have an obligation to do what's best for the community, not for the hacks who work for the school system. Let's imagine I lived in Marinette. I'm on the school board. Well, the school district's going to lose enrollment. Yes, but we're going to get an opportunity for an alternative education experience for kids, and those kids might do better than if they were here. That's good for the community, not bad. It's not good for somebody that might be laid off who works as an overpaid hack who works for the Marinette school system, sucking down their big pension, taking summers off and, you know, retiring at the age of 55. It may not be good for them if we have to get rid of a few of them. But it is certainly good for the community if you have thriving alternatives for education and you get a private school that opens up in there that pushes the envelope and makes the public schools finally do a better job of educating kids. These school board members, however, and I talk about this a lot, it happens it happens to conservatives as well as liberals. We talk about it with regard to people elected to Congress from Iowa and Maine and Nevada and Wisconsin, and that there are a few years and they suddenly think they're Washington. The same thing happens with people who run for the school board. I'm going to clean it up. They get in there and suddenly they think they're the school system. No, they're the people who are there to operate the school system in the best interest of the community. And if the best interest in the community is to cut funding, or get rid of a lousy superintendent, or change a program, you do that. Your job isn't to shill for whatever the people who work for the school system want you to do. They may be looking out for themselves, but you're supposed to be the representative of the community, not the representative of the schools. So they go from we, you know, the whole we being the public and the them being the governmental body, they become part of the them. In their mind, when they say we, they now mean the people who work for the schools. They get totally co-opted, they whore out, they sell out. All but one member of the Wauwatosa School Board. That's the problem there. They think it's their job to con the public into spending more money on the schools rather than their job being to be as efficiently as possible, run a high-quality school system without regard to what the overpaid, lazy, lard butts who work in the school system think. Got to go to Marinette, Wisconsin to make that point.